Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Nastin Padasale. So currently we are revising for our DBT BITP examination. So this is a part 4 video. At the same time, please read the disclaimer that I have typed in the description below of this particular video. So first question, which one of the following is not a single gene disorder? So these are the list or example of some single gene human genetic disorder because these disorders will be generally affecting or generally causing mutation in a single gene of a chromosome. Okay. So this includes cystic fibrosis, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, phenylketonuria, tay disease, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, neurofibromatosis type 1, Huntington disease, myotonic dystrophy, familial retinoblastoma, hemophilia, muscular dystrophy and fragile X syndrome. If you take an example of cystic fibrosis, this disease arises due to defect in a mutation in a CFTR gene which is forming this particular channel called cystic fibrosis transmembrane receptor. It is an ion channel which will be involved in transporting a chloride ion from inside of the cell to the outside. Okay, so for cystic fibrosis patient, this particular gene will be mutated. So this particular receptor ion channel can't able to form properly. It will be non-functional. So what happened? The chloride ion will be started to deposit in the cell membrane. At the same time, what molecules can't able to hydrate the cellular membrane. This result in formation of a thick mucus layer. Okay, so ultimately the dirt or bacteria that are coming through the airway of lungs, they can't able to get cleared from the mucus due to the formation of this particular thick mucus layer. Okay, so what happens is that they, the person will be having a repeated lung infection and for normal person the mucus will be thick at the same time it will be slippery so easily the dirt or other toxins that are entered to the airway of the lungs it can be easily removed whereas for cystic fibrosis patient since the CFTR channel or receptor is defective what happens the mucus layer will be getting thick due to the presence of chloride ion which will be trapped in the cell so it will be producing a thick mucus at the same time the mucus will be uh, somewhat sticky in nature. So the person will also have a breathing infection. So this disease arises due to defect in a single gene called a CFTR. Okay. So uh, muscular dystrophy, hemophilia, A, spinal muscular atrophy, which is also coming under single gene disorder. So in this particular spinal muscular atrophy, it is due to a defect in a gene named survival motor neuron 1, which is located in chromosomal number 5. As if you take Turner syndrome, it is not a single gene disorder because it is a chromosomal disorder. Either a part of the X chromosome or the entire X chromosome will be missing in the cells of the female body. So, this Turner syndrome will be affecting the entire X chromosome. So, it is coming under a chromosomal disorder. Next is tDNA of agrobacteria must be excised from its circular bacteria for transport into a plant cell. Which one of the complex of whip proteins is responsible for DNA nicking at left border and right border of the sequence? The correct answer is with D1 and with D2 gene because with D2 will be coding for a protein called or enzyme called endonuclease which will be nicking the tDNA at the right border. Okay. So, please check the part 1 video where I had discussed the functions of various with gene. Next is which one of the following amino acids is optically inactive? It is glycine. So, glycine is the simplest amino acid which have only H in their side chain. So, glycine is the only amino acid that is not optically active because it don't have any chiral center or chiral carbon. Okay. So, for amino acid, it should be optically active means it should have four different groups attached to the alpha carbon. Whereas, if you take glycine, the groups that are present around the alpha carbon, it is not different. The two groups are same. Okay, so therefore glycine is considered so optically inactive. Next is which one of the following is best suited for hydrolyzing the peptide one of the carboxyl side chain of aromatic residues. Okay, so here I had able to see trypsin which is isolated from bovine pancreas will be cut at the carboxyl side chain of lysine and arginine. So trypsin cut at the carboxyl side chain that is right hand side of your lysine. But if the next amino acid is proline means trypsin can't able to cut at the carboxyl side chain of lysine. Next is submaxillary protease, which is isolated from the mouse submaxillary gland, which will be cutting at a carboxyl side chain of arginine. Next is chymotrypsin, which is isolated from bovine pancreas and it cut at a carboxyl side chain of your aromatic amino acid like phenylalanine, tryptophan, and tyrosine. Just like the tyros, uh, just like a trypsin, the chymotrypsin also cut at the right side, right hand side. But if the next amino acid is proline, means it can't able to cut. So, the chymotrypsin is responsible for cutting at a carboxyl side chain of your aromatic amino acids. So, correct answer is chymotrypsin. Whereas, if you take some other uh, thing like Staphylococcus aureus V8 protease, which is isolated from Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, it will be cutting at a carboxyl side chain of asparagine and glutamic amino acid. Next is ASP N protease, which is isolated from the Pseudomonas phagi. It will be cutting at the N terminal side of asparagine and glutamine. Next is pepsin, which is isolated from the stomach of pig. It will be cutting at a N terminal side chain of leucine. Phenylalanine, 
tryptophan and tyrosine. So it will be cutting at the N terminal side chain of your aromatic amino acid. As at the same time, it also cut at the N terminal side chain of your leucine. So here you can be able to see the pepsin will be cutting at the N terminal side, that is left hand side of your leucine and phenylalanine. But if proline is present before phenylalanine or before some other aromatic amino acid, before leucine means then this particular pepsin can't able to cut. Next, the endoproteinase lies C, which is isolated from the bacterial lysobacter enzymogens, which will be cutting at a uh, carboxyl side chain, that is right hand side of the lysine. And cyanogen bromine will also cut at a carboxyl side chain of methionine. So, among the things which I have listed over here, only this asparagine end protease and pepsin has a capacity to cut at the end terminal side chain. Rest of all the chemicals or all the uh, cleaving agent, they will be cutting at a carboxyl side chain. Okay. So next is in human, the inherited autosomal recessive disease called xeroderma pigmentosum is a result of defective. Okay. So xeroderma pigmentosa persons, they are unable to repair the damage to you, uh, the damage to DNA which is caused by ultraviolet radiation due to defect in uh, this nucleotide excision repair. So, in hereditary non polyps colorectal cancer, there will be defect in DNA mismatch repair system and in xeroderma pigmentosa, there will be defect in nucleotide excision repair. So, the DNA mismatch repair system is involved in correcting the DNA damage caused by UV radiation and chemical mutagen, whereas this nucleotide excision repair will be correcting the DNA damage caused by UV radiation. Next, Bloom syndrome, Fanconi anemia and hereditary breast cancer. These diseases arise when there is a defect or when the repair of double standard breakaway homologous recombination pathway is non-functional means then these diseases arise. Okay. So, generally the homologous recombination will be correcting the damages that are caused by mild alkylating agent and DNA cross-linking agent, reactive oxygen chemical. All the three agent like mild alkylating agent, cross-linking agent, reactive oxygen, they will be cutting, they will be causing a damage, they will be affecting both the sons of DNA. So, homologous recombination pathway will be repairing the double standard bricks. Okay. The next, which of the following is not the RNA virus? So, DNA virus include adenovirus, herpes virus, pox virus, parvovirus, kepandana virus. As RNA virus include Rio virus, Pircona virus, Togo virus, orthomyxovirus, rhabdovirus and retrovirus. So, here if you take paramyxovirus which is an RNA virus and HIV which is coming in a category called retrovirus which is an RNA virus and the Pircona virus which is also RNA virus. Whereas, if you take this HPV which is human papilloma virus which belong to a DNA virus. It is an enveloped virus containing DNA genetic material. So, DNA virus include adenovirus, HPV that is um, Hepatitis B virus and HSV, herpes simplex virus and EBV, Epstein barrier virus and KS that is Carpus Sarcoma herpes virus all are having a DNA as a genetic material. RNA virus include HIV, HTLV, influenza virus, HCV that is hepatitis C virus, dengue virus, entry virus, RSV and Nipah virus all are having a RNA as a genetic material. Next is Amanita pallodes which is responsible for majority of the fatal mushroom poisoning contain alpha amanite. That specifically inhibit, it specifically inhibit RNA polymerase. In the past video, we had discussed more about this particular uh, inhibition by this particular alpha amanitin, which is produced by this particular mushroom. So, please check the video. Next, in Bhopal disorder, by which hazardous substances the toxicity effect get increased? So, the Bhopal disorder. So, it was a disorder which has occurred, which has taken place in Bhopal, in uh, Bhopal. And this particular disorder has... Uh, uh, Bhopal, uh, this particular disorder, uh, this particular disaster is an industrial accident which happened on December 3rd, 1984, where nearly 40 tons of methyl isocyanate gas has leaked from the Union Carbide plant, which is located in Bhopal. Okay, this methyl isocyanate is a gas which is generally used for producing rubbers and adhesive. It is highly toxic at the same time it is most irritant gas. Okay, recently there was a chemical accident which has been happened in Vishagapatinam. It is called as Vaisak gas leakage or Vishagapatinam gas leakage which is again an industrial accident which has been occurred in LG polymer chemical plant which is located in Vishagapatinam, Andhra Pradesh. It was happened on 7th of May and in this particular gas leakage, the toxic strudine gas has been leaked. And this particular gas is again responsible for producing and manufacturing latex and other rubber related things. Okay. Next thing, which are the following receptor persists blue light in plant? So, cryptochromes and phototropins are responsible for perceiving blue light in plant, whereas phytochromes are slowly responsible. Phytochromes alone are responsible for observing red light and fire light pigments in plants. Okay. 
Next is which one of the following is a micronutrient in plant. So these are the micro, macronutrient, micronutrient, macronutrient. It is needed in large quantities and it is responsible for plant growth and development. And micronutrient, it is responsible for some other process like photosynthesis and it is required only in very minimal amount. So micronutrient include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium, magnesium and silicon is also coming under macronutrient. So silicon, magnesium, calcium, sulfur or macronutrient at the same time the other thing which we are listed is also coming in this macronutrient. Whereas micronutrient in plant include iron, manganese, copper, zinc, molybdenum, boron, chlorine, nickel, sodium, cobalt. These are present in, uh, these are responsible for some other activities. So, like if you take uh, iron, it is responsible for chlorophyll synthesis. Like though they, they have an accessory role. So, here they have given which one of the following is the micronutrient. Okay. So, at the same time, we should also remember the code for them. Okay. Symbol for them. So, first is manganese. It is, it is a micronutrient. Whereas if you take potassium, calcium, magnesium, they are coming under the category called macronutrient. Identify the mismatch. Okay, so for which you should know the uh, uh, use of the enzyme. So first is restriction endonuclease, which is sequence specific DNA endonuclease that is isolated from various resources and it is used for many applications starting from gene cloning and other genetic engineering. Whereas the S1 nuclease, it is an endonuclease specific for single standard D DNA and RNA. This particular enzyme has been isolated from aspergillus or SA and this S1 nucleus generally used for um, producing or blunt ends okay so it is generally employed for a process called transcript mapping okay so transcript mapping is a process which is employed to identify and localize a gene that are present in genome so this particular s1 nucleus it is isolated from asparagus what i say and it is specific only for single standard dna and as well as rna it can't able to have any effect that is double standard dna and dna rna hybrid are highly resistant to this particular s1 nucleus and deoxyribonucleus which is an endonuclease specific for double standard DNA uh, as well as RNA and it is isolated from E. coli and this particular DNA is uh, DNA which is used for nucleus proof printing technology which is used to study about the transcription factor. Okay, so it is used to uh, locate the specific binding site of the protein on DNA. Okay, so it is used to study about the transcription factor at the same time it is used to study about transcription regulation. The other enzyme include DNA ligase which joins the two DNA molecule and DNA polymerase 1 which will be adding the nuclear at the pre prime end of double standard uh, DNA molecule for filling gaps that is it is used to synthesis lagging cell synthesis at the same time it is also used for NIC translation and this DNA polymerase is used also used for labeling studies. Next is reverse transcriptase which is used to make DNA copy of an RNA molecule and polynucleotide kinase it will be adding a pathway to 5 prime OH end of the polynucleotide whereas terminal transcriptase will be adding a homo polymer trail to 3 prime end of the linear duplex. The polynucleotide kinase will be adding a pathway to 5 prime end and this terminal transcriptase will be adding a homo polymer trail to the 3 prime OH group of linear duplex. Next is exon nucleus 3 it will be removing the nucleus from the 3 dash end of the 3 prime end of the DNA molecule and the exon nucleus 1 which will be removing the nucleus from the 5 prime end of the DNA duplex. Next is alkaline phosphatase which will be removing the terminal phosphate group either from 5 prime end of the DNA or 3 prime end of the DNA or from both. So here they have given first is DNA polymerase 1 which is used to make translation is correct and S1 endonuclease which is cleaves at single standard DNA it is also correct. DNA is 1 which will be cleaving your double standard DNA it is also correct. Whereas if you take alkaline phosphatase we have studied it will be removing the terminal phosphate either from 5 dash end or 3 dash end or from both but here they have given it removes the phosphate present in 5 dash end. No this is a mismatch because it has a capacity to remove the phosphate group both in 5 prime end of the DNA and 3 prime end of the DNA. Next is which are the following are the components of phospholipid. Okay, so what is mean by phospholipid? So the phospholipid are the key component present in your cell membrane. Okay, and it consists of two hydrophobic chains, hydrophobic tails of fatty acid and one hydrophilic head which have a phosphate moiety joined together by a glycerol group. It might be a glycerol or a alcohol group. Okay, so it has a phosphate group. Okay, and next it has a fatty acid. So, hydrophobic tail will be having a fatty acid, both saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid. And it also have a glycerol. Sometimes this glycerol will be replaced by alcohol. So, option B is correct. Okay, next is cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator protein. It is a chloride transmitter involved in transmitting your 
chloride ions okay next is which one of the following amino acid is coded by maximum number of codon it is leucine so first you should know the genetic code among the 20 amino acid three of them which include leucine arginine serine they are encoded by six different codon okay and methionine and tryptophan are the only two amino acid which are coded by just one single codon okay so if you take tryptophan it is coded by one single codon so here you can able to see the code for tryptophan is UGG and valine it is coded by here you can able to see there are four genetic code coding valine and alanine same four genetic code for coding for the alanine. Okay, you should note leucine, arginine and serine are encoded by six codons. So here leucine alone is there. So correct answer is leucine. So next which one of the following is a cobalt containing uh, vitamin. So the correct answer is vitamin B12 which is having a cobalt that's why it is called as cobalamine okay and it is the largest and most complex vitamins and if you take vitamin b1 which have sulfur with them and vitamin b6 and vitamin b12 they have phosphorus with them so we'll be continuing in the part 5 video thank you friends thanks for watching this video